In this video, we're going to go over how to make a G.I. Joe and a Cobra heavy transport helicopter. We're going to go over some of the history of the Chinook, some of the inspiration for making these helicopters, how to disassemble some sets, how to paint them, and then how to finish them off to look like real Cobra or G.I. Joe Chinooks. G.I. Joe, a real American hero, premiered almost a decade after the end of the Vietnam War, and the influences that war had on the toy line are very apparent. In Vietnam, the helicopter really came into its own as not only a fantastic troop transport, but also a weapons platform and a heavy lift vehicle. This was reflected in G.I. Joe getting their own Cobra gunship in the form of the Dragonfly helicopter. G.I. Joe also received the Tomahawk, but what really is the Tomahawk? Superficially, it looks like a Chinook, a heavy transport helicopter, but if you really play with one, I'd argue that it's more like a Huey. The Tomahawk has open sides like the Huey, making it great for transporting troops and for close fire support. But unlike the Chinook, the Tomahawk's anemic rear ramp can't be used by Joe vehicles or even standing figures. So then what is the G.I. Joe collector to do? Hang them below our dragonflies on string? Or possibly spend hundreds of dollars on rare Dino Valley sky cranes? But there is another option. This Joy in Helicopter toy makes a fantastic G.I. Joe or Cobra Chinook with minimal work. It's nicely made and really sturdy. It holds up to play. The rear ramp is huge. A vamp can roll right into the back of this chopper through the spacious loading ramp. And the cavernous cargo hold can fit more than enough figures for a recon patrol or light assault squad and their vehicles. To create our G.I. Joe and Cobra Chinooks, we are mostly just going to paint them. So the first thing we want to do is take the toy apart. Fortunately, this is really easy. They're just screwed together. I would just recommend bagging your screws so that when you go to reassemble the toy, you know which screws go where, and you can see I've done that here. Then I just lay the pieces out in the backyard, trying to keep them apart. You'll notice I have the one helicopter apart from the other because one's going to be Cobra Blue and the other's going to be green like a G.I. Joe vehicle. Folks always want to know what paint is used, so I'm using the Krylon Fusion. I find it's like really strong and robust and holds up and bonds well to the plastic and it won't chip even if you play with it. Also make sure it's a warm day. Uh, the paint's not gonna bond well if it's too cold out. And also prep your surface if you've got stickers or any kind of like decals or paint apps on the surface. Lightly sanding those will help the paint um, you know, adhere to the surface. And I think I'm using 500 or 600 grit, something like that, but you know, just try something out, but don't use something too aggressive to where it really like digs into the plastic. Otherwise the paint won't, uh, won't cover that up and you'll see it. Here you can see where I didn't sand and prep over this sort of like paint app and it's showing through the paint. So I had to go back and redo it. So don't do that. I always recommend using a lot of very light coats to build up the paint slowly. You don't want to spray on too much at one time. That'll just build up and you know kind of ruin your detail. And so here's a great example of me not listening to my own advice and getting impatient. And so you can see the paint kind of built up and as it dried, it bubbled and filled in the detail and looks really bad. But it's not a total disaster. You just have to wait for it to dry and then sand it down and then do more coats. So you end up wasting more time than if you'd just been patient. But it's all worth it when you see all the pieces laid out and they start looking really nice. And, um, you know, the paint's looking really good. That one paint app area where the stars and bars thing is like... It just kept giving me trouble, so I think I had to sand that a couple times, so you might run into that, but you know, just keep at it, don't get impatient, just layer, sand, layer, and it'll start looking really good. Next is the fun part, all the pieces are done, they look really good, bring them inside, and just start assembling the, uh, the toy back together. Um, I took some shots just showing the cross section so you can kind of see how the screws go together. And the way that the uh, the rotor blades kind of slide in and you got to make sure like everything's positioned right before you screw it back together. And don't these look good? This came out really good. So there's the, uh, you know, the original version, which is pretty cool with that camo. But then the G.I. Joe kind of paint scheme and then the Cobra paint scheme, which I tried to get similar to the Rattler. So it kind of fit in. But there's still something missing. We got to add some stickers. So let's get on to that. For stickers, it's just a combo of like old stickers I have. Most of them are repro from Toy Hacks and then some that I just printed out myself for the, the bigger kind of ones and just applied those where I thought they looked good. And so here they are. I'm so excited to have a helicopter that 
my vamp can drive out of. This is just really, really great, like something I've always wanted. You know, I had a Tomahawk when I was a kid, and I was always bummed out that I couldn't drive my vamp out of it. Or, you know, even the Ram cycle couldn't ride up in there. And I always thought, like, man, why, why does this not work this way? And this really works well with the way I like to play and think about my Joes is like little teams kind of going off on missions. And this vehicle is just a great size to like pack up all their gear and all their guys. And you can see here too, it works great for Cobra. I mean, it really fits in. I think, um, you know, it gives Cobra that mobility they need to like do their kind of, you know, deep strikes into G.I. Joe territory or just, you know, hit any kind of facility they want and then get out of the way. And do not underestimate the value of folding rotor blades. This makes storing them so much easier because they're pretty big. And by request, I kept my youngest son's helicopter stock so now we can tell ours apart and not get them mixed up. Overall, I think this is a fun little mod you can do, you know, over a weekend. It doesn't take a lot of work or like crazy skills or anything like that. And it really adds to your G.I. Joe or Cobra Air Force. So thanks for tuning in, watching the video, and yo Joe. He's too big to go in. I feel like Joe's.